Okay, it's Racer Mice, and I've got a cool, really cool kind of uh, feature of Ableton that I bet you haven't used before. Um, been talking a lot about arpeggiators lately, and uh, some people were asking me about step sequencers. And basically, one of the things you can do on the beat step, which I, or the, excuse me, the key step, which I love a lot, is it has this kind of transposable step sequencer. So you can like create a sequence, and then by playing it on the keyboard, you can shift it up and down. So it's a, can you do the same thing in Ableton? Yes, you can. It's a little bit tricky, and uh, let me just sort of demonstrate it. All right, so I've got a track here. It's my grand piano track. And I'm just using my MS-20 Mini. It's not an MS-20 Mini, really. It's a, it's a, it's basically just the USB interface that looks a lot like an MS-20. But anyway, so just using the keyboard. And let me turn a metronome on, and I'm just going to play a little riff here. Okay, really simple little riff. And here it is down here. Let's uh, go it up a little bit. And, oh, I don't know. Um, well, I guess I didn't have the count in set, but anyway, um, I'm gonna move this over to the beginning of my little clip. And I'm gonna say set one one. Normally you wouldn't have to do this. You would just say, okay, you know, play the notes. And I'm gonna just uh, quantize everything because I want to. And I'll zap that, zap that, make it exactly one measure long. And it's just a real simple little, uh... and it's a loop. And let me turn off the loop for a second. And I'll turn off the metronome. now. Okay, so, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, my cat, of course, this is Rem, and he loves to participate. Um, so you can assign, like say over here, I take this clip and I say, um, uh, I don't do it over there, I come over here, I say MIDI map, and I select the clip, and I assign it to a range. So I'm gonna hold down low C there and to this uh, the next C up. So one octave plus a key on there. And I'm gonna turn off MIDI mapping now. Now, I'm gonna trigger it with that. And since I've triggered a range, this is the cool thing. Okay, so I trigger it and it transposes according to the key I press, right? Just like on my beat step. I should be again, my key step. Sorry, cat, behave. Um, now I'm going to come down here and I'm going to change the launch mode to uh, no quantization. Okay, so every time I hit a note, right? And it plays through because I don't have it looping. And I can also set it to gate. Right? Okay. So you can uh, play around with the quantization here, legato and so on. Um, but that's the main thing. Usually I set it to gate, no quantization, so that it plays only when I press the note down, and it transposes, and it happens immediately when I press the note. If I wanted to, I could actually have it trigger, uh, you could have a continued loop, so that as long as you hold down the key. Right? And you can of course do other things like uh, decide that you wanna put uh, chords. So that's another way you can even do things like, you know, set of chords you like to play and assign that to a particular uh, clip and away you go. Now, the one thing you do give up is that uh, basically that sort of gets mapped and it's done with it. You really can't do much with that octave of keys anymore. Uh, but the good news is if we come over to our MIDI mapping over here, I'll pop this open here, you'll see that this is, it says channel one and these are the notes that we have mapped and uh, it is uh, 
are that particular track and slot one. Now, you can, uh, as it's learning, you can you know set a particular keyboard to a particular channel. So if you have a bunch of different controllers, uh, map them to different channels. Uh, everything more or less when the MIDI gets played out, it gets remapped according to whatever the, the MIDI is, uh, MIDI routing on that track is, but you can use that to your advantage. And then even if you have like a smarter keyboard, you can do things like, you know, switch between modes or have like splits and things where using different ch MIDI channels, depending on how your keyboard is set up. So you can get a little bit more uh, bang for the buck out of that way. So um, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a pretty fun little hack. Uh, I enjoy it. And it's a good way to get sort of a, sort of a, a keyboard triggered step sequencer from Ableton Live. Hope you enjoy. Until next time, this is Eraser Mice for Learn Max. There we go. Of course, it can't be polyphonic because you can't trigger more than one clip on that track at the same time. Oh well. <laughs>